coming right there. Alright guys, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. I want to talk about using barricades for realistic training, right? Because when we go to a shooting range, we're restricted a lot of times to a square range, basically. That's down range. We can only shoot in that direction. But honestly, to be better for combat shooting, we need to be trained, we need to be training realistically. You need to think 360, you know, threats from any side like this, but also like this. Think uh, second story windows, think rooftops, but also below you, you know, if you're on a stairwell and there's somebody below you on the stairs or above you, we need to start always being situationally aware. So how do we replicate combat shooting uh, on a square range. One of the ways to do it is to use barricades. You get used to shooting around barricades. It starts making you think uh, more tactically. For example, on the flat range, everybody, when they shoot their pistols, they shoot bang. Now, your law enforcement guys, they, uh, they're they taught that when they, sh when they draw that pistol, they'll always step to the side. And what that's doing is it's basically getting them off the X, but all those cops, they step in one direction because they've always done it on a flat range with that whole class of cadets to their left and right. More importantly is the why. The reason why they're stepping is to get off the X. So in other words, make it harder for the enemy to shoot them. I got that. Another technique, again, use barricades. If you have barricades nearby, you know, if you have to do that speed reload, the gun goes down or whatever, it helps you build the habit of stepping towards cover. Now, this is not actually cover. It is, it's made out of plywood. It is a two-dimensional graphic representation of cover. Now, cover can be anything. Cover can be a vehicle. Cover can be a uh, concrete wall, the corner of a building. It can be anything, literally anything. So when you think barricades, don't just think, uh, you know, barricades on a range. Understand that while you're using them at the range, you're doing this because you're trying to uh, build good shooting habits for concrete. Now, you, you go to ranges and they've got the, all kinds of very common designs, right? This is basically what we call a VTAC barricade. It's, cut, it's got sideways slots and horizontals, little windows, different heights for you to stack your barrel when you shoot. Okay, I got that. I understand that. Right now, um, but let's be smart about how we build these things, okay? Because uh, literally, I can get two of these out of a sheet of plywood, or this design right here, same thing, two out of a sheet of plywood, right? But I can get two of these five foot high walls, well, six feet roughly. Um, and that leaves me space off the top of my sheet of plywood. I can get two of these walls and one of these walls all out of one sheet of plywood. And what that allows me to do is I've got my walls to get behind, right? But I also, I can take this low wall right here and I leave off one foot and that allows me to basically lay it down. And now I have a much shorter wall because now I can replicate this being a being a low wall. I can actually get down or I can uh, think of it as like the, the hood of a car, something like that. Now, I make my barricades so I can take them apart. It makes it easier for me to transport them. And how I do that basically is on the back of these things, uh, the steel I pick up from MGM targets, it's called barricade wall backers basically it's a sheet of marine plywood you buy it at lowe's home depot and it's basically just the steel inserts you get two legs two of these tall vertical posts and uh, the pins you stick the feet in run the pin through and it, it holds it in place guys it really does it's that simple comes with the hardware you can buy the set from mgm targets i, I don't want to uh, I don't remember the exact price. I want to say it's about a hundred bucks. Add the cost of the marine plywood. And yeah, you're, you're looking at, they get pricey, they do. You can just build them out of wood yourself, but by the time you start buying hardware to do it and everything else, you got to make sure that these things will last and that you can also use them for training properly. Uh, now, why would we t waste time doing this? Now, if you're just thinking that this is just a, a, 
wooden board for me to hide behind, yeah, you're missing the training point. But if I was to think of this as though this was the corner of a building like this, all right, um, there are different drills that I can use to practice on this barricade. All right, so we're gonna go hot. All right, now your, your normal kneeling position for, uh, for support to be accurate is you drop your strong side knee, literally just drop it down right where you're at. And that allows you to place your uh, support side knee so that when you sit back, I've got good position. Right? That's all great, that's fine and dandy, but that's, that's for accurate shooting at distance. We're talking tactical shooting using these barricades. Now, assuming that this is the corner of my building here, I wanna set up so that I can shoot right here at my target. So what I do, and again, this is the beauty of having barricades to train with, is it gives me physically something to see. I'm not just doing this on a range and just kind of mentally figuring out where it is. I have to actually break past something that I can't see past. That's, a, that's one of the beauties of this. I don't necessarily have to have a corner of a real building, a piece of plywood's fine. Now everybody thinks, well, you know, you need to you need to practice locking in and all. The... Honestly, it's better to stay off barricades if you don't need them. Stay off of them. All right. So plant this uh, whatever side it is. Plant that foot forward. Place it about where the limit of the target is. Right. So wherever I think that target is, that's where I'm going to step. I'm going to plant that kickstand, and then when I sit down. I'm gonna actually point that, that toes, not point it out in, the, out in the open, because if it is, as I lean out, my knee is becoming very, very visible more than my body. So rather than that, I point my foot towards the very edge of my event horizon, and now when I lean out, I lean out, I can support uh, my, uh, my strong side uh, knee right there, I can lean out and I can see it. Now, if you can't see, Guys, that's real life. You adjust where that kickstand is, slide it out a little bit more, and again, pie out when you can see that target, <laughs> ripple the rounds off, back behind cover. Now, to go to the other side, the other side of my wall, it'd be the same thing even if I was standing. Plant that foot. Now, I would have to lean my body out a lot, exposing my body. That's where you use that technique of switching shoulders. You can literally lean right out and Get on that target, or you can completely switch shoulders, switch over, and get on that target. Nice and easy, get back behind cover. Literally being able to work both sides of this thing. Now, you see the beauty of this is now I actually have something that my students can train on. Now again, you can lock in on the barricade or plant that foot. I'm gonna actually, now you don't want your barrel touching it. C grip on the wall, lock, push in on it, and get out till I can see that target. Adjust my kickstand, elbow in, don't have that elbow out, and get on the target. Piece of cake, easy drills to do. Again, I mentioned being able to lay this one down. Let's say this is the hood of my car. It's low. I guess it'd be like a Camaro or a little, uh, a little Miata. I like shooting up Miatas, I'm good with that. No problem at all. The problem I have is for me to clear my barrel, my sight is over the top of the wall, right? I can see over the top, but my barrel is still touching this vehicle, whatever the barrel, if concrete wall, whatever it is. You shoot a concrete wall at this distance, brother, you are eating all that concrete, it's all coming back in your face. That's why we need to train in, tr we need to make these mistakes in training. I've had many students shoot the edges of the barricade. Make, let them make their mistakes here rather than overseas or in a real combat situation. So better technique, because by the time I come up and clear my barrel, now my head's even higher. Better break it up over my shoulder, Get down when my optic clears. I know my barrel's, my barrel's clear. Now, I got up high enough to clear, turn my barrel sideways. Now, when you do that, sounds easy, but you gotta remember my offset, my height of uh, optic over bore is actually super elevated a little bit, trajectory of my bullet. When I turn the gun sideways, gravity is still pulling it down so now I need to aim high 
and I need to aim in a direction that that magazine is facing. Just a good way to remember it. Why would we have to do that? Well, because we had to turn the gun sideways. It's stuff we do because we have barricades here. Nobody would do that on the range without barricades. All right, hey gents, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial as much as I did. Hey, so we were talking about the need for barricades for realistic training, right? Now, everybody can shoot uh, accurate without barricades, but they, they shoot accurate when, uh, where they're comfortable. So for example, standing, put two rounds in the high A zone, hmm, easy, even from kneeling. I don't need to have a barricade for this. Guys, I don't even have to sit back. One in the high A, two in the high A zone. Nice and easy. Now, when you're using barricades, they've got the different levels on them. That you can even be more accurate, which is good for teaching you how to shoot stable. Dig it in, make sure your barrel's not touching. You can actually lean into it, get nice and stable. High A zone. High A zone. Now, but the problem though is you start getting down, you start getting between kneeling and standing, you get in those areas where guys are no longer in their comfort zone. So by using barricades with holes, you're making the shooters shoot in the areas that they are not comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you're not shooting accurate, but you can, but you've got to practice it. You won't practice what you're not comfortable unless somebody makes you do it. That's my job, right? But it's also the barricade can do it for you if I'm not there. So by me forcing you to shoot from heights that you're not used to, now you've got to find that position. How do I get down? Because this is me comfortable kneeling. I don't have a hole right there. My hole's lower. So now what I need to do is I need to get on my gun and then get down and find that, find that uh, high A zone, find my target, and one, and two, high A zone. Now, what I did was I had to adjust, use what I have to get into that position. Same thing here with this one. This one's even lower. So I can sit sideways and make that gun even lower. Get it up. I got to break it off my shoulder, try to keep my optic towards the top of this hole, and I can get it right there. High A zone one, high A zone two. Nice and easy. So you see what barricades do for you, having these holes, these ports, is it's making you shoot at positions that you're, you're just not comfortable. Guys, that's real life. It is, it's real life. You're not gonna have positions that are always where you want it. Shooting off that bottom right there, you can lay prone, but me laying prone, my barrel is still that high. How do I shoot through holes like that? We can get in a, using broke back mountain uh, technique, laying on your side, supine, rolling on your side. There's different ways to do it. Easy stuff, but you've got to have the barricades to force you to do it. So these are valuable training tools. Now, when you start talking about these diagonal slots and these horizontal slots, all right? Now, what, the key to shooting these is because my rear sight is taller than my front sight. That, what that does is that super elevates the gun to compensate for gravity, All right? That's how it works. Nothing hard, you're used to it. You've always zeroed your guns like that. But when I tilt my gun sideways, instead of it going up and then coming down, that offset is making the bullet go to, in this case, off to the left. Gravity's not gonna make it come back to the right, is it? It's not, no, gravity's still gonna pull it down. So if you're gonna lay the gun on its side, you have to remember to aim high. How much do you aim high? Loaded question, right? Well, really it comes down to how far away your target is, right? It comes down to how high is your optic above your bore because that changes the angle on the type of uh, projectile that you have. A slow 300 blackout, uh, subsonic's gonna be a steeper angle taking off. Likewise, you're gonna have to hold higher this way. Now, I mentioned it's gonna go off to the side, so not only do we need to aim high, we also need to compensate for holding off to the side. So just rule of thumb, easy stuff, aim a little bit high, and then you need to hold the direction that, what we use is the magazine. Whichever way the magazine is aiming, Hold in that direction. So if I had to lay my gun on its side, looking through this barricade here, 
I'm go my barrel's clear. I'm gonna aim a little bit high in the high A zone, and I'm gonna aim a little bit, that's right, the direction of my magazine. I'm gonna put one, and I'm gonna put two. I was holding roughly one, two o'clock, and uh, just a couple inches because I'm not that far away. That's the key, I'm not that far away here, but when you start shooting at 100, 200, 300 meter targets, you're gonna have to offset more, so that's why you need to practice this out at the range. Now, how about these 45 degree ones here? You still gotta do the same thing. If I'm canted like this backwards, instead of my gun being vertical, I can't see through, I've got to camp my gun sideways, I try to keep my optic in the top half here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim at my target, I'm gonna aim, which way? I'm gonna aim a little bit high because my gun's canted, not as much as if it was sideways, but just a little bit less. And because it's canted, I still need to hold in the direction of my magazine, which is on this side, not the other. Slightly up at one o'clock and fire one, fire two. Now notice, I didn't have to press my barrel on the barricade. That is important, it is, because you're not always gonna be able to touch your barricade, you're just not. Real life, real barricades, you're not gonna be able to shoot. Now, I've heard people say, well, this is three gun shit, guys, it's three gun. You're never gonna have your gun sideways in combat. Diagonal, there's not a single diagonal hole out there in, nat in nature. You're just not gonna have to do it, you're not. You're not gonna have to have your gun diagonal. You're not going to have to have your gun sideways like that. You just wouldn't do it. Okay, that's pew pew guys trying to talk smart. Let's slap them right in the face with a little bit of reality here. All right now, remember this is a two-dimensional graphic representation of a barrier on the planet. Whether it's a corner of a building, uh, a wall, or possibly a nice shiny car. Right now, these little sideways diagonal ports, we would never see them in combat. We just wouldn't. We just wouldn't see them in combat. Again, bullshit. This right here, guys, is what we call an A-pillar. Now, everybody understands you've got the engine block. Everybody wants to hide behind the engine block. I want to hide behind those rotors, right? I want it to, in order to shoot, I need to cant that gun sideways get it up so I chicken up at the same time. Everybody grasp that. If you wanna learn more about shooting around vehicles, I could, you've got whole other videos on it. But back to my diagonal, see the angle of this A pillar right here? And then you've got your B pillar, some vehicles, two doors, uh, they're a lot more angled. And then you've got the C pillar back here. Two dimensional graphic representation. This is legitimate, this is depth. Now, shooting at an angle, right, like this, through this vehicle, now because everybody's like, well, this is hiding behind the engine block right here, right? But realistically, if my target was over at an angle, I'm actually behind the engine block right now. If you look at this A pillar, and I have my other A pillar on the other side of the windshield, guys, I've got this A pillar, that A pillar, my window. That looks a lot like that little sideways port right there, doesn't it? Now, I can keep my gun vertical. I can make a lot of noise like the pew pew guys that do nothing but shoot around fucking plywood. Or I can do realistic shooting, get nice and stable. I can come up, match my angle, remember to aim high, remember to aim the size of my magazine, and I can practice this shot by using my VTAC barricades. Realistic training to prepare you for combat. Now, this is not the only barricade you can use because the problem with that is a lot of people want to lean right up against this corner, right? We talked about this. They dig in and they shoot like that. They shoot. The problem with this is I can't do that on real vehicles. Right here on this corner, if I was to plant if I was to even dig in on this bumper, guys, right here, I still can't see around the edge of the vehicle because this thing is aerodynamic, it's curved. I can't touch the front of the vehicle unless I'm halfway in front of it, all right? There are some vehicles you can shoot around, but there are also some that you can't. Also, if I was to lean out, all right? Lean completely out, 
Now I clear it with my optic, but my barrel hasn't cleared the front of that. That's a steel bumper. It's got crumple zones, but behind this plastic is a steel bumper. So now I'm not just eating concrete, I'm eating steel. So what we do is we make additional barricades. In this case, guys, we use the exact same stands, wood and my, my steel poles, my same legs. This is a two scale, two part replica of a Dodge Charger. It comes apart, I can lay it flat. It's made out of two sheets of plywood and it will go inside my Suburban to take the classes. The wheel is cut down and we have plywood inserts for hubs, but we also have plywood on the back. So I can actually lay on that tire, lean off to the side, dig in, and I can actually pie completely underneath that vehicle. It allows me the training to do that. But the other thing it allows me to do is if a student leans out like these two bullet holes right here, if they make a mistake, better to make a mistake and accidentally shoot the plywood in training, make the mistake in training, better to sweat in training than to bleed in combat. You shoot that steel bumper on this car, that car, Guys, you're eating that bullet. So anyways, this is a lot you can do with barricades. It really is. Um, I'm not saying you have to make your own. Go to a range that has them. But if you're looking to take your personal training to the next level, you want to get out of that square range mentality. Everybody says, oh yeah, I, I train for combat. I train for combat. It's easy to say that. I challenge all of you to do that. And to do that, you need to train realistically. Train the harder stuff. You've got to get down on the ground. You need to get up off the ground. You need to do that gun yoga, but having the barricades to help you do that, to push you a little bit further, that's what's gonna make you a better war fighter. Anyways, that's all I have for this, uh, this week on Tactical Rifleman. You know the deal, I read all your comments. Uh, put them below and I'll see you next time. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.